in 1973, two angels appeared to me. Uh, and they were uh, Michael and, and Gabriel. And they told me, uh, you, you have been chosen to be anointed for the ministry in the whole world. So then the mind of Christ came to my mind. And he integrated with me, then he began talking to me. I call that the mind of Christ. Jose Luis de Jesus Miranda, a Puerto Rican immigrant and the leader of the Growing in Grace ministry, claims to be none other than the reincarnation of Jesus Christ. And Miranda has thousands of followers worldwide who agree with him. He is the second coming of Christ. He is puppy. He is daddy. He is the desire of all nations. The first time I met him, it was indescribable. You just feel this love that just being around him just makes you feel happy. I do more miracles than Jesus of Nazareth because I teach people how to heal themselves. For a, a, a cult leader to say, I am Jesus or I am God, it's the height of narcissism. I mean, these people are very self-obsessed. And in a sense, they feed on their followers to energize and, and keep their narcissistic image of themselves going. It is a narcissistic vision that either an extremely motivated person could pull off or a deluded person could pull off. Miranda leads this modern congregation by beaming sermons twice weekly from his Miami, Florida headquarters via satellite. Growing in Grace members gather in strip malls to hear his message of acceptance and salvation. When Jose Luis shows up in person, he is usually greeted by devoted followers who shower him with gifts and cash. The members of my church, they, they love to give. Yeah, they give me gifts, from cars to jewelry to whatever I need. Gracias. Gracias. A religious leader who accepts gifts from the congregation is involved in a very dangerous game. They can't establish a pattern of a relationship that is predatory and solely directed upon receiving rather than on serving. You shouldn't be afraid of his riches or bothered by it because God is here and all the riches of the world belong to him. But the religious leader hasn't always lived in the lap of luxury. I come from a very poor family. Uh, my father was an alcoholic. I, I had a strong heroin habit. At the age of 21, I, I went to jail. And in jail, but I didn't have any, any, any other option but to stop using drugs. With time to reflect on his life, Jose Miranda claims to have had a dramatic spiritual epiphany. Catholics are not Christian, uh, Evangelicals are not Christian, Pentecostal, they, they're not Christian. Every church, except for this one, believes that there is hell. I know what it is to be an Evangelical Christian, uh, and it's, that's hell. Because you feel condemned, you feel you're a sinner, you feel if you do something wrong, you go to hell. And here they tell us that we're not sinners, you know, that makes you feel good. To say that there's no sin is totally ludicrous. When we no longer have sin, we no longer need to be redeemed from sin. And so the person who claims to be Jesus Christ has just undermined his own need to be on earth at all. There is no such thing as sin because there's nothing that can separate you from the love of God. Growing in Grace's teachings make it easy for members to justify behavior frowned upon by traditional Christianity. It's nothing wrong to drink, as long you do it with self-control. Sex is fine, as long you do it correctly. Money is fantastic, as long you spend it right. I feel so good that there's no devil, I don't have to worry about anything, I'm not scared. What I see is a man that's a little more than a con man, who has gotten all these people to buy into his theology, that they can do anything they want, that they can have anything they want. Ironically, Miranda identifies closely with the number of the beast. Six, six, six. That's me. That's why I love that number, because that's the number of my name. That's why all my followers, they tattoo it in their arms. For 2008 years, religion has sold to us a lie. 
666 has been miscommunicated to the world as the number of the devil. There is knowledge and prosperity in this number. Jose often proclaims that the end of the world is near, a moment he calls transformation. In order to establish the government of God on earth, we need the transformation. When this corrupt body transforms into a perfect body, like, like Jesus when he resurrected from the dead, all of us going to be like that. He will transform our body into a glorified body. I would love the transformation when I become 66 years old. I would love it to be that way. But I'm not saying it's going to take place on that date. But it could. But I know it's soon. As they await deliverance, Growing in Grace members are very willing to give generously and practice total devotion to their spiritual leader. If he tells me to do something, I'm going to do it, but not in a cult kind of way. Growing in Grace really does seem to be more of an informal personality cult where a very charming uh, uh, and effective preacher has captured the yearnings and the imaginations of, of a great number of people. They say this is a cult. Uh, we don't mind. Is bad calls, good calls. This is the real, the good one is this. And if this is the wrong one, my people will, they won't change it for anything else. The church is my life, uh, forever. I would never want to leave. Why would you leave something that makes you happy? I can't think of anything that the main Christ Jesus would ask me to do that I would not do. 